Welcome to another Mathematical Moment from the American Mathematical Society. I'm Layla Sloman, and today I'll be talking with Dr. Valentina Wheeler, a mathematician at the University of Wollongong in Australia. Today we'll be talking about Dr. Wheeler's research in geometric analysis and how it can be used in important applications like the spread of wildfires and the shape of red blood cells. Welcome, Dr. Wheeler, and thank you for talking with the AMS. Maybe you could start by telling us um, a little bit about your background. Um, what kind of research do you do? Thank you so much, Leila, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you. It's really exciting. Um, so I'm a geometric analyst. So I work at the intersection between geometry and partial differential equations. So what, what we study in our work are um, geometric objects. We try to understand their properties by expressing these properties using something called partial differential equations, which are a little bit more complicated than the usual equation that you find in mathematics in high school, for example, where you solve for X and Y, um, but you have multiple variables that you have to handle. So the way we, we design a, a, a project, so a research project, for example, we want to answer a question in geometry, for example, what type of geometric object will be a solution for this problem? I know you mentioned the applications to bushfires. Um, that happens because um, a bushfire, if you simplify it um, at the simplest level, it will be like a front moving. If you make it in two dimensional plane, it will be like a like a line moving in the plane, for example. Usually it's mm. more complicated than that. And people who do bushfire modeling and the um, in the applied sides, um, consider those terms. Um, so anything that moves in nature has a certain um, energy that drives it, right? And then if we can find that energy, then we can um, consider the situation where this energy is minimized or maximized, and that gives us some equations. Um, this type of um, analysis is, is, is called calculus of variation and has been developed for a couple of hundred of years. And once you do that um, analysis, then you come to a set of equations that we can study. Usually we call them curvature flows. Most of the things that I've studied are linked to um, are these. And that happens because the energy that moves the objects is um, uh, linked to the curvature of the object. So if you want to explain curvature, you think, um, for example, if you take a piece of paper in the plane that is flat, right? That a piece of paper is flat, that has no curvature. Like if your table is properly made, then it's flat and your glass doesn't move on it. Um, but if I take my, um, my piece of paper and I bent it, then I introduce curvature to it. There's ways to measure this curvature based on how you define your object. And that gives you the partial uh, differential equations that we're gonna study. Um, and to come back to curvature flows, so we say curvature flow because it moves based on the speed that generates the movement is usually an, um, a function which depends on curvature. Depending what type of function you consider, you, you get different, um, different movements. And then it was noted um, for some time now that um, fire fronts have similarities with second order curvature flow. So which means I have two derivatives. That's why it's called second order. What characteristics of wildfires were similar to what um, you were seeing in mean curvature flow? So um, one particular thing that um, the curvature does is speeds up the, so the, the higher the curvature, the faster the, the flow will move, right? So the configuration that we've looked at was um, um, that or merging, merging fires. So if I have a front that looks like V and I have my fire in, in, the, in the corner, like the apex of the fire will um, move, um, considerably faster than the straight lines. And that happened in real life. Okay. So if they do fire, they, they've done fire experiments in, in, in lab where they had two, two lines of a fire. And so the fire is a V and the apex just jumps, has this jump behavior. And um, that's also been um, exper ex experienced in reality by, by firefighters. And we know that when we have two bushfires merging, then there's this um, really dangerous conditions that get created at the merging point. Yeah, that's so interesting. I mean, why would the apex of the fire move faster than the rest of it? So in the, um, I mean, I'm not an expert in the bushfire modeling, but the way it's explained in um, in the apply setting um, is the fact that the fire generates its um, um, 
energy. So mm -hmm. if you have two fires merging, then there's double the energy sort of. So the apex has a lot of heat there. Um, so the same behavior of jump of velocity happens in curvature flow. So if I have something which is curved, then it will move faster than something which is flat. And it's like sort of like a basic observation, but then um, putting the experiments together to match it took a little bit of a while. So if I have a curvature flow that's flat of the lines and then the apex has curvature, the apex will jump. That's one of the similarities that has been observed. There, there are other little ones. And recently I've been looking at things that don't work. So sometimes the, the model doesn't quite fit. So then you have to modify it. So that's what we do at the moment. We're looking at, oh, okay, the curvature is not enough. So we have to put something extra because if you look in a, in a real fire, it's not a two-dimensional, it's not a one-dimensional object moving in the plane. It's something that has <clears throat> um, has generated heat. So there's a three-dimensional mm -hmm. movement there happening. I have so much more to learn. I, um, this um, understanding, like first when I started linking curvature flows and bushfires, I was thinking of them simplified. And I think mm -hmm. simplifying a model which is in nature to um, to fit strictly fit a mathematical model is not the way to go. I think you will have to. Um, so what I learned is the fact that bushfires are um, behave more erratically than how a curvature flow will will um, will move. So it's probably mm -hmm. more of a mixture of analysis that we're doing with curvature flows and all the observation that people who are actually in the field have done. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can say I learned a lot, but most of them are just open questions at the moment. Why will it do the way it do, does? Another result that I like, probably it's, um, I have, we haven't talked about it, is the one that links mm -hmm. to uh, red blood cells. Mm -hmm. uh, we can use one of these energies that comes into curvature flows to actually answer questions when are blood cells um, becoming spherical, which links to a disease called spherocytosis. And that is really hands-on and I'm hoping to maybe in the, in the future get it picked up by a team of biologists that we can experiment with together. I am just a pure mathematician, but I still have dreams of going into a lab. <laughs> yeah, interesting. How did you get um, involved in studying red blood cells? So we started working with one of the energy called health freak flow, uh, health freak energy, which links to health freak flow. So health freak mm -hmm. um, was a scientist, I would say, <laughs> physicist, mathematician. He thought, how can I better, how, how can I, um, he, he thought, how can I um, describe the energy of a biological membrane? He says the energy of a biological membrane, including blood cells, can be expressed by this energy, which contains a couple of curvature terms. And then we looked at the energy and we figured out that under certain conditions, um, we can get spheres. And then there's a disease called spherocytosis, which has, um, um, which is quite destructive for, for destructive for humans and where the red bloods, the red blood cells become, instead of being discocytes, which they're a little bit squished, they, they're round. And then the spleen recognizes the disease and starts eliminating them and the people are really sick. Um, so we use this energy to actually say in, um, we can only get spheres in terms of these parameters for this, 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 this. So we have a list of them. We could tell exactly when, for which parameters the spheres appear. Now the idea would be that um, a biologist will come and say, oh, we can actually modify this parameter, which is intrinsic to the cell uh, by some sort of drug, like some sort of medication, and then cure spherocytosis, make the cell go from, from spherical to discocyte without having these surgical procedures that they have now for spherocytosis. How far is this work from actually being something that doctors could use or being implemented like in a hospital? It's just on paper. It's mathematical. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been looked at or tested and so on. So I couldn't say how far it is because we mm -hmm. haven't implemented. But um, it's really tangible, that one, to be honest, because mm -hmm. it's so straight. I mean, we, the, the um, biologists could come and say, oh, this is too complicated. We can't use this. I, I'm not sure. But for us, it looks so um, um, uh, uh, so clear, the image, because we have these four parameters. And based on these, the cell will change modify these then the cell changes yeah um yeah i'm curious uh like what it's been like for you to um work on these problems that have applications um compared to you said your earlier work you were very much focused on just the pure math side so um yeah what's the difference 
I'm excited no matter what. I would work on a problem mm -hmm. even if I can't find an application for it. Mm -hmm. um, I guess finding applications means that we can better explain the work um, to someone who doesn't do geometric analysis. So right. we would go, I would go and um, talk to someone and say, oh, actually, I can use this curve to flow and model bushfires, very simplified mm -hmm. bushfires. Um, so I guess it's more excited because we can advertise what we're doing. Well, mm -hmm. if I'm just doing pure maths, it could be a little bit scary for, in general <laughs> yeah. if you present it, right? But um, I would say every single thing in nature can be expressed by a mathematical equation. And that's something that people don't realize, like the movement of the leaves in the wind. I'm not sure how, um, how your fire burns when you make a pit fire and you get the kids to toast the marshmallows. If you go on the, um, oh, one really nice example, if you go on the beach and you walk um, of the, on the shore and you see the little pebbles as they roll and you pick up a piece of glass and you see it's soft, it's, um, it's smooth, right? The mm -hmm. ocean glass becomes smooth and the, the process of getting eroded and becoming rounder and rounder can actually be modeled by a curvature flow called Gauss curvature flow. So Ben Andrews I knew is the one who solved this rolling stone conjecture, it's called. Um, so I, I don't know, mathematicians usually when they walk in nature, they can, um, they always ask themselves, how is that happening? And then we, we try to answer it.